Hi guys, welcome back to another daily tarot card. These are your daily tarot cards for Friday, June the 17th, 2022. Today we're pulling from the, sorry, the Shining Woman tarot cards. So we're starting off with the sun. Who doesn't want to start off with the sun? But we have fallopian tubes up here. So for me, I feel like this is a couple and they're celebrating um, a fertility. Because they were showing this, uh, I, I used to love watching uh, Fraser. I still do. Like they had, I would sit there and I would watch, I, I watched it from back, front to back. And then I rewatched all, all, some of it and I just was like, oh, enough. And the only reason I bring it up is because he had a, an African fertility god. They were showing me that. And I feel like this is like, they're saying immaculate consumption. So I feel like it's like, you know, you as a couple have been trying for a child and you're celebrating this win. So this is what I feel like success. They're showing, they're highlighting the flowers. So I'm not sure if they're highlighting the flowers, like like the flowers surrounding this card will soon surround your life, like success will surround your life. So I'm not sure if you're wanting a big family, but I feel like this is Spirit's way of, con of confirming that you will have a big family. It looks like you will have three to four kids. It looks like three, and then it's like the fourth. I'm not, you know what I mean? But I, you know, either way, it's like Ocelot and congratulations. Like, I was a surrogate myself, and I know it's, that was the most heartbreaking moment for me was to see um, a surrogate dad that I was caring for cry. It, it killed me. It broke my heart. I, I felt like I let him down, and I was just like, I never want to see that look on one of their faces ever again you know and it's just like you do everything you can but it's just like it's the most heartbreaking oh that that killed me like i knew it wasn't my fault i knew what was going on there you know but still nevertheless to see someone cry like that it's just like oh it's just devastating so the bull above the sun wheel hints at the the same union of opposites Joining hands. Masculine energy as the emperor card. At the same time, bull's head seen from the front exactly matches the shape of the uterus and fallopian tubes, particularly when a woman is laying down. So that's supposed to be a bull head. To me, I'm sorry. That looks like the female re reproduction. That looks like the uterus. That looks like fallopian tubes. You could call it a bull all you want. Many ancient goddesses' shrines show bull heads painted or sculpted on the wall. Simplicity, optimism, optimism, joy, relief after a time of struggle. You know what? We've been getting knockings of that ver verbiage for a while. Relief after a time of struggle. I'm I can't like verbatim say like oh this is the 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 time the date or uh, like you know that they said this before. We've been getting that. For a bit saying, you know, that there's going to be some, you know, you know, peace and healing coming in energy and excitement, friendship, especially between men and women. They're saying opposites attract, you know, I definitely feel like, honestly, especially going to this tradition. No, it wasn't tradition. Excuse me. Temperance. When there's fish, there's like, they were telling me with IG, there's plenty of fish in the sea and they're highlighting the starfish. And it's like, you don't go for just any old fish here. You go for the unique, unique ones. You see what nobody else sees. You know what I mean? Like, you just have that ability about you. So we're going to come over to tradition. The number five, change and transformation. You know, again, we have the sun being highlighted here. You know, we have a fish peeking out of the water, coming up for air. Maybe the, you know, we keep getting the this page of... Um, Page of Cups, this young, youthful energy. They mentioned Pisces during the full moon forecast. Who that Pisces is, I have no idea. Maybe their moon is Pisces. So the flower at the center gives us an image of nurturing, so Empress energy. In times of fear or stress, we can meditate with this card. Placing ourselves in the circle of feeling protected, the flower grows in the desert. Similarly, a fish leaps out of dead water. The card promises us that our lives can change. And what seems dead can now uh, uh, come alive with joy. 
so funny they mentioned this because especially when I was in the car, a song came on. And I kid you not, they kept uh, they kept saying it, it was Nirvana, Teen, uh, not Teen Spirit. Um, they were saying um, oh, I can't remember the song of it, but they were like kept saying as a friend, you know. And I was just like, are they trying to tell me that they only like me as a friend? <laughs> You know what I mean? I was just like, oh, I was bummed about it, you know? And then I started doing, like, I only do this once a year. I do messages for myself once a year. I, I've i paid people. I was disappointed. And I'm just like, you know what? Instead of being disappointed, let's just do, believe in ourselves. And it's just like, I started. And I'm just like, okay. I'm, I'm getting different information. So I'm like, hmm. When I do readings for myself, I'm like, you know, is this my ego? Is my ego having a, having a go at me? You know what I mean? And, uh, it's just like looking at the reading from prior and I'm reading it over. I always keep them. And this time I was smart and I wrote the date on it. Cause I was like, Oh, I don't know. Write down the date. <laughs> so that way I could reflect. Right. And, uh, I was just like, wow. You know? We find ideal ideas and the personal power in the uh, uh the the vitality of tradition teachings and rituals rituals so i definitely find value in that you know i wish that my grandmother singh had left lived long enough to teach us those teachings i wish that my great grandmother justine and i i know in in uh the spiritual realm you know i know this was passed down by someone you know what i mean um but it's like nothing is is more potent than actually having them here to teach you. You know what I mean? My messages are always strong, so I know there's someone there that is very potent with me. Is it my dad? I'm not sure, but you know what I mean. It's, it's like you know, it's crazy. Finding your path either through tradition of your own searching, a sense of protection of trust and hope. Funny enough, that's one word that they keep when I'm do I'm writing this down, my uh, thing down. They keep saying trust. You know what I mean? And it's not that I don't trust the universe. I don't trust humans. You know? They even say that in the Bible. It's like, uh, you know, don't trust these mere mortals. You know what I mean? Um, but funny enough, trust, hope, protection. You know what I mean? Those are the kind of things we look at partners. But trust is one word they keep putting up. Wisdom is also responsibility. Commitment to help others without um, credit or reward. That is the hugest thing. Without credit and reward, you know, and, um, just by like watching tribal trails and mass for shut-ins and I, I can't remember who taught me that, but I remember I came across someone and they said that, you know, how we feel about when we, we, we donate, you feel good. It's, I, I can't, unless you've experienced that, like I cannot you just feel this happiness that comes over you. And it's just like, you know, in my heart, I know I did something that made God happy. That's how the way I feel, you know? And I can't remember who told me. I think it was like 2016, 2015, around there. And they were sitting there saying that, you know, when you sit there and, and claim, you know how we could, we have a part on our taxes to claim donations. And they're like, what was the point of donating then? Because you're basically getting a benefit from it by claiming it. And I'm like, wow, I didn't even think of that. And every time I, when I would do my taxes, you didn't do, yeah, I did. But I was taught that we are not supposed to claim it. I'm like, because what's the point of donating? Because you're getting a benefit from it. Sometimes social instructions, especially marriage. They mentioned marriage to me just now too. That's funny. They mentioned marriage. I was like, oh, okay, I see you. You know? It's just crazy. And, you know, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut and let things fall the way they're going to fall. So, again, the sun over a temper, Ted. Wow. You know what the funny thing is? I didn't even know. I think I know. I don't think I noticed that um, earlier. But with the EA weight, it's like, you know, the path that leads to the sun. And it's always off to the left and it's showing the path that leads to the sun. Clock's the version of the fool girl opening the box and reveals evil in the world. 
Her name, however, means all giver and symbolizes the confinements of ego and rigid thinking. Death opens the box and liberation liberates the soul into the new existence. The bird on the box flurries, flurries its wings. The dove was the companion goddess of love. While in the story of Noah, a dove signals the discovery of land reborn from the flood, from the emotions. But I feel like something, your life is about to be reborn, a brand new beginning. Funny enough with the four rivers, you know, this is Rosh Hashanah, this is September. I feel like you are about to have a brand new beginning come September. Remember we were talking about the full moon and they showed me a trumpet? And I said, I don't see the trumpet as a negative symbolism because with me, the shofar, Rosh Hashanah is when we sound it. We sit there, we sound it, and it's just like, you know, wake up, you know, and celebrate. It's a brand new beginning. I always tell people, it's like, you know, every moment in our life is an opportunity to sit there and start things fresh and new. We don't have to wait for these certain milestones. That's what we're taught. New Year's and all this garbage, you know? You don't like the way that things are, you're behaving or how your behavior affects other people. Whatever this is. It's like every moment is an opportunity to start there and start anew. You go to bed and it was a bad day. You you still lay down and you're like, you know what? I'm going to try and be better tomorrow. I'm going to be a better person tomorrow. You know what I mean? But I'm like, why wait till tomorrow? Tomorrow's not promised. Why not start being a good person right now? You know what I mean? So I feel like this rebirth... And I definitely feel like when they're saying temperance and they're saying plenty of fish in the sea, I feel like you go after the unique ones. You don't go after any just any old fish. You go after the unique ones. You know? And even whatever it looks like, it's just like, you know what? I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait patiently. Because, you know, when you know something's supposed to be in your life, you have no problem waiting. So we're going to go over to place of birds and I feel like this is a phoenix phoenix is the biggest symbolism of rebirth because it's like they combust into ashes you know they were just talking about that with life and death combust into ash and reborn as a baby phoenix and you know is reborn into the full I guess as, as itself the suit of birds is the element of air it teaches us about art and the mind there may be physical Maybe in the physical world, some may be laying out stone, some by growing uh, bushes or trees in a particular form. All of them share the same sources. The human needs to create Im uh, images which will express a sacred idea suggested, but not directly expressed in nature. So if you think about when we're talking about stones, remember we had the Olympic year I think it was 1994, 95, 96, around there. Because I remember going back and forth from Quebec to Ontario. And we would go in certain areas and it was just like this drive. It was just endless road. And you would see them, you know, like you would look up on the, like you would see the hilltop. You would look and you would see these. And I believe the indigenous people were making them. I know other people started making them, but... You know what I mean? It's just like a symbolism of hope. Like, I feel like, you know, when they, I'm going to pronounce it wrong, so I'm not going to even bother saying it. People that have, I'm one of them. I have angels in my home. I have Mother Mary. Mother Mary's statue has always meant something to me, you know? Um, so I feel like, I don't feel like it's ideology. But I know when I was watching uh, Family Karma, I know when they you open by the front door, you know what I mean? They have a sacred place by their front door. You know what I mean? And I feel like it's important. I feel like it's just like reminding us who we should be, you know? And I feel like Cheval, we were touching on this, you know? It doesn't matter what you believe in. I feel like it's holding us accountable. We're going into this, you know, a lot of places where, you know, instead of going to, to temple, to, to um, mosque, going to the church, it's like you are sitting there and... Going out into the world and doing missions for others. You're doing selfless acts to help someone else. You know what I mean? Trying to mold you and build your moral compass. 
giving you appreciation of what you have in your life. You know what I mean? And I feel like it's like you doing the right thing while you're out in the world and you're not being held accountable by an institution, by your rabbi, your priest, your imam, whomever, your Buddha, whomever your spiritual leader, guider, whatever you want to say is, is there. You know what I mean? And what we were just talking about, holding ourselves accountable. So remoteness, wow, that really rings true. Separation from emotional investments, creativity, realization of projects. You know, I feel like life always throws us its curveballs. I feel like it's like we don't feel like we can handle them, but you know, I, f I feel like the universe is like, you got this, you know? So we go to the four rivers. So it's the Jewish Rosh Hashanah. So they're talking about the Hebrew alphabet that it's on the bottom right hand corner there as well. Begins to a 10 day period of repentance leading to Yom Kippur, the day of anointment. To make new beginnings, people uh, symbolically cast old clothes or bread into the river or stream, which sees a, a version of the ancient ceremony called, uh, I'm, I'm not going to even try, in the four rivers. According to Jewish uh, legendary legend, Adam became uh, frightened on his first day in Eden. When the sun set, God told him to strike to, to, together two rocks, sh uh, shadow and night, for the first fire. The cross roots at the bottom right form the, the Hebrew letter Alpha. A, a silent letter which uh, brings both Hebrew and alphabet and the Ten Commandments. Rosh Hashanah. Oh, so they're speaking of a personal experience here where they had found this. New beginnings, casting old, casting off old limitations. Admitting past mistakes. That's the biggest form of growth. Is admitting that past mistakes. You know? But I feel like there's this, you know, I feel like that's why they're symbolizing September. So this year, Rosh Hashanah, and it's, I don't have my calendar open because it's on my phone. Uh, I know it's around September 23rd to the 27th. It's all, it, you know what I mean? Because it's 10 days, but there's significant ones where, and, and it's really significant for me because my last surrogate child that I carried she was born on Rosh Hashanah. Like, I, it was literally my birthday, and then it was Rosh Hashanah. Like, it's all, like, that magical energy of it. You know what I mean? And that's why I say it's like, you don't have to wait until September to sit there and start to be a better you. It's like, give every day as an opportunity, every second, any moment. You're doing something wrong, it's like, and you recognize it. It's like, that is the, your, your higher self saying, this is a moment right now for you to change to your higher self. You don't have to live like this anymore. You can see how it's destroying your life and destroying the friendships and loved ones around you. You know what I mean? It's holding yourself accountable and that's how you grow character. That's how you grow a moral compass. That you you realize what you're doing is affecting others in a negative in a negative light. You know, essentially can uh, will affect you down the road because it's like nobody wants to be around someone that's going to, uh, you know, treat them like trash. So I hope you guys enjoyed these daily tarot cards for Friday, June the 17th, 2022. May the universe bless you good. We'll see you for the next Daily Tarot card. Bye.